Hey hackers, the coding kid here. This project started as a small experiment, but it grew bigger and bigger until this happened. But as you can see, I ended up with something quite cool. I think you're gonna like this one. Let's get started. This is ASCII art. It dates back to the 1970s. It's a graphic design technique that draws pictures with characters, which are the letters and numbers and symbols that we type with. It was an amusing diversion for the OGs, the original geeks. I thought it would be fun to write a program to convert a picture into ASCII art. I usually use JavaScript for my projects. But this time, I decided to use the most popular programming language in the world, Python. To get started, I needed two things, a picture and the ASCII characters. I decided to use this fun picture of Einstein and the smallest ASCII string I could find. It's only 10 characters. Once I got those two things, I was able to write some code to convert the picture into ASCII art. First, I imported the image class from the Vipul library. Then I created a variable for the output file, and I also created a variable for the character map. Next, I loaded the image using the image class from Pull, and I converted it to RGB, which has three channels, red, green, and blue. I cleared the file, and I realized that I would need a way to convert a pixel to a character. So I created a function for that, pixel to char. It works by converting the pixel to grayscale by taking the average of each color channel. I divided the grayscale value by the step size, which is 256 over 10, and then subtracted the result from the largest index value, which is 9. It took me a while to figure this out. We'll take a closer look at this logic later. Then I returned the character map off index which will give me the output character. Next, I needed a way to write to the file, so I created two loops, one for Y and one for X. Inside, I added the character to the line. Then I opened the file and wrote the line. In the terminal, I ran createArt.py. I opened this image in Notepad, but it didn't look good with a white background. Next, I tried Sublime Text, but that didn't allow me to zoom out far enough to see the full image. Finally, I used Google Chrome. It has a black background, and it allowed me to zoom out far enough. The image was not bad for a first attempt. It's quite squashed, and the quality wasn't great, but I only used 10 characters. Let's dive into this image to see how it works. Each of these rectangular blocks is a pixel. Some are grey, some are black, and even the white spaces are made of lots of white pixels. Black and white pictures use 256 different grayscale colours, from black to grey to white. ASCII art replaces each of these grayscale values with an ASCII character. When we zoom out, the eye is tricked into seeing these ASCII characters, like the original grayscale pixels. The ASCII string we used has 10 characters that are ordered by density. They are mapped to the appropriate colour, based on how dense the character is, or how much ink is used to draw the character. For example, pure black is best represented by the space character, no ink required, while pure white is best represented by the at character, a lot of ink required. Next, I wanted to try a longer ASCII string. This is a 70 character string, which is much more popular for generating ASCII art. Let's see how Einstein looks when we upgrade from 10 characters to 70 characters. Okay, somehow that looks worse. Much worse. My first thought was that this was a bad image for ASCII art. Then I decided to switch to a more standard image. 
The Mona Lisa of image processing, the Lena image, which has been used as a standard way to test image processing code since the 70s. Here is the 10 character version, and here is the 70 character version. Same problem. The 70 character version is worse. Why? I was sure that it wasn't the image. The next thing I had a look at was the font. There are more than 200,000 fonts. The font that I used in this case was Courier, which is a popular font and is used in Hollywood movie screenplays. Courier is a monospaced font, which means that every character takes up the same amount of whoop, which is very important for ASCII art. It means that each line in our ASCII art picture will take up exactly the same amount of space. So I was sure that the image and the font was not the cause of the problem. The next thing that I looked at was the density of the characters how much of ink we needed to draw each character. To do this, I needed to get the characters, cut them up one by one, and then zoom in to each character and see how much ink was required to draw the character. I wrote some JavaScript to help get these characters into one big picture. I found this awesome library called Done to Image, and I imported it in the HTML. Then I added some styling and the HTML content. Next, I needed to use the DOM to PNG library. So I added a script tag and created a variable for the characters. The contents of that variable is copied into the pre node using text content. Then I get the node for the PNG and set its text content as well. Then the code uses the DOM to PNG library to create a new image and set its source to the base64 image created from the character set. Finally, it appends that image as a child of the body. I opened the web page and saved the image to my hard drive. Then I used this tool to cut up the big picture into individual tiles. And I needed some Python to calculate the ink required to draw the character. So, I wrote a Python script to take the tiles and sort them in order. It works by taking all the tiles and for each tile, it loops over the pixels to find the density of them, which is the average of all the pixels. Finally, I looped over the result and printed each character and its density. I plotted the density of the characters to see if they looked okay. Here is the graph for the 10 character string. It's not perfect, but it's not too bad either. The characters on the left are dense, and generally become less dense as we go to the right. Then I plotted the graph for the 70 character string. It looks bad. The characters on the left are not dense enough to represent light grey properly, and the characters on the right are too dense to represent dark grey properly. So that explains why Einstein and Lena look better when using the 10 character string rather than the 70 character string. The next obvious question was this. ASCII has 128 characters, but only 95 of those characters are printable. It was invented in 1963 and only fully supports English. But these days we use Unicode, which supports thousands of characters in hundreds of languages. Why not use Unicode characters to make better looking text images? I guess this is called Unicode art. There are 150,000 characters to choose from. Unicode supports dead languages, hieroglyphics, playing cards, emojis, and even chess pieces. I didn't want to go too crazy. But I felt it was more realistic to just use standard characters from popular languages. So no Bob the Boulder block characters. I wanted a language with very dense characters, and the language for that is Chinese. Yep, it requires a lot of ink. So I had English and Chinese. There are thousands of Chinese characters.
characters, but I only took the first 700, plus around 100 English characters. That's about 800 characters in total. They should be one big happy family. Okay, so remember when I said that it's important for the characters to take up the same amount of space? Well, Chinese characters are big. They're called full width characters. The English characters are half width characters. If I used these characters together, I would get images like these. I had a couple of choices. I could look for half width Chinese characters. Spoiler alert, I looked, they don't exist. Or I could look for full width English characters. Good news, they do exist. And because they are wider, they will also help create images with a better resolution. Instead of the squashed images we were getting with ASCII characters. I wrote some Python just to print out the characters. And I needed a way to sort them. Fortunately, I already had the Python code to map the characters to density values. So, I just adapted that code to search through the 800 characters, find the best character for each grayscale color value from 0 to 255, and output it to the console. So, I sorted those characters with the sort density script, and yay, I had a new 256 character string. I ran it on Lena, and whoa, it looked amazing. The image wasn't squashed anymore and it had much more detail. I went back to Einstein to see how he looks. Much better. Let's take a look at some other pictures. And I tried the oldest picture I could find. This picture is from 1869, the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad in America. Here are some other cool pictures I turned into Unicode art. There are many ways to take this project further. One way would be to use other Unicode characters to make a better string. And we could also find a better font. In hindsight, this project should have been titled Beginner Programmer Opens a Can of Worms because I learnt about Python, ASCII, Unicode, full width and half width, hex, density, grayscale pixels and other things. But I had fun and I hope you had fun watching. As usual, I've left links to the code from my GitHub in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye!